are watching New Multicultural Community Hour. Today we are joined by John Paskevich. He is a Canadian documentary photographer and filmmaker from Winnipeg with Ukrainian heritage. His photographs have been exhibited widely and are in the collection of many institutions including the National Gallery of Canada, the Winnipeg Art Gallery, the Ukrainian Canadian Cultural and Educational Center, the Banff Center and the Art Gallery of Ontario. Welcome to our studio, John. We are excited to have you on here. Thank you for inviting me. In today's interview, we will be focusing on his contribution to Ukrainian Canadian heritage and discussing how through films and photographs he helps to bring every story to light. So let's start. First of all, I want you to introduce yourself for, for those listeners who might not be familiar with you. So tell us a little bit more about you and the projects and your work. Well, my name is John Paskvich. I'm of Ukrainian heritage. Uh, my work, photography, and, and my filmmaking is very uh, intercultural. Uh, I'm interested in uh, when, uh, when people from different cultures come together and, and, and sometimes clash and sometimes don't. Um, there, there's a strong ethnographic mm -hmm. quality in, in my work, uh, I don't think they have an overtly political message. I'm, I'm mostly an observer. What was the impetus for you or key moment when you realized that you want to connect all your life with photographs and film production? Well, uh, when I finished university, uh, with, with, with a Bachelor of Arts degree, I wasn't sure what, what, what to do, mm -hmm. uh, how to proceed f from there. Sh uh, sh should I get a job? Should I go for more schooling? So I, I, I took a year off and I went traveling to Europe. Mm -hmm. I, I went uh, all across Western Europe, but, but, but also because I was young and naive, I also went to, to, to Eastern Europe as well. Uh, I went through uh, Czechoslovakia and Poland and Bulgaria and, and Romania and also at that time the, the, the USSR. And that whole part of the world w w was very much in the grip of communism. But, but I was wandering around like a hobo with a camera and uh, and and I I enjoyed lo looking through a frame. Mm -hmm. I I had a peculiar pleasure from lo lo looking at things uh, through a frame. And so I said, well, you know, uh, I, I'm going to pr pursue this. I'm going to study photography and film, and, and see how it goes. So uh, I went to. Uh, to Toronto, to Ryerson University. It's called now Toronto Metropolitan University, which I think is a silly name, but anyway. And so I studied photography and film there, and then I came back to, to, to Winnipeg, and I, I started photographing in the north end of Winnipeg mm -hmm. because the, the, the North End back then, that, that was about 1977, 78, the uh, North End of Winnipeg, Selkirk Avenue and Main Street were undergoing a dramatic change. All, all the Slavic people, the Ukrainians and the Poles and whoever, were, were, were old, dying, and their sons and daughters were moving out elsewhere. And the, uh, and the indigenous people were were moving in for, um, from the reserves. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I thought this movement was it was very interesting, and I, and I started photographing that. And I've been actually pho photographing there right, right up to now. Your parents are Ukrainians, but you were born in Austria, right? Yeah, I was born in. Uh, a displaced persons camp in uh, Austin, Austria. Uh, yeah. And you were uh, grew up here in Canada. Do you still feel a connection with Ukraine? And 
how is it to be Ukrainian Canadian and what does it mean f for you? Yeah, I, I see a connection. I, I mean, I, I feel a connection because when I was growing up, my mother would be sending all kinds of letters and parcels back home, mm -hmm. to, uh, back home be, <laughs> being Ukraine. And they would send letters back. Of course, the, uh, the letters under the communist regime were all censored. So pe people were always saying, oh, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, but, uh, uh, but send us this. <laughs> and, and so, yeah, I felt a connection. And also, I grew up in a community of Ukrainian people. The sons and daughters from, from the first wave, the, the first immigrants who came here in the 1890s and the ones between First and Second World War, and also the, um, the, the, the people like myself and my family who came over the Second World, who, who, uh, who came to Canada after the Second World War. So uh, I, I was surrounded by, uh, by, by Ukrainians. Uh, yeah, and, and, and also Eastern Europeans of all kinds, Jews and Poles and uh, Czechs, Slovaks. How do you like this multiculturalism? I like it. Uh, uh, I like it. Right now, I think identity politics, identity politics in Canada it is kind of crazy. Uh, mm -hmm. I've got problems with, with identity politic, politics as it is now in Canada. But, but over, overall, having v v various people uh, from various countries in the world, uh, I'm fine with that. Do you think this multiculturalism was like a reason why your uh, films are focused like on a diverse range of humanity? It's a factor. In university, I study the social sciences, anthropology, sociology. Mm -hmm. So, you know, th th that's a connection with, with my photography and, and, and film as well. And, I, and as I said, I, I was surrounded by, by other multicultural. People, other communities. Yeah, like, like, like in, in high school, St. John's High School mm -hmm. uh, had a couple of nicknames for St. John's High School. One was Kosher College because there were so many Jews. And another one was uh, Pierogi Palace because there were so many U U U Ukrainians. Ukrainians and Poles. So it, it was just normal, normal. But do you feel yourself as Ukrainian or more Canadian? I feel myself more Canadian. I respect Ukrainian history, all the suffering in Ukrainian mm -hmm. history, but I'm also frustrated by the, the politics, the Ukrainian politics over the years. Uh, yeah, it's a complicated relationship. <laughs> yeah. yeah it, 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 it's very complicated. Like, I, I just heard now that the, uh, that, the, yeah, that, 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 that the Ukrainian Supreme Court, mm -hmm. the guy at the top of the su Supreme Court, is being investigated f f for, for bribery. Mm -hmm. The Supreme Court, heard. yeah, who's, you know, yeah, but I, I'm not blaming the, the, the Ukrainian people as a whole, but it's got a, such, such a terrible history in so many ways. Even living in Canada, um, you continue to help Ukraine and you continue to contribute to support Ukrainians here in, living in Canada. You also donate your photographs to Osiradok. What are other ways, how do you help and how do you show your support and respect to Ukraine? Well, all my life I've been photographing the, the, the you know, north end of Winnipeg. As, as I said earlier, uh, that there was a major, de uh, major demographic shift with, with, with all the Ukrainians moving out of the north end. And that was, that was like a, a major Ukrainian uh, uh, part of Winnipeg. Not, not only Winnipeg, but, but, but all of Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I've been photo, uh, photographing uh, that. Uh, and uh, I, I, I've also uh, done work uh, 
on Ukrainian farmers. I made a film on Ukrainian farmers. I photographed Ukrainian farmers uh, as, 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 as well. And I went back to Ukraine uh, many years ago, and I made a documentary film on my mother's village. It's called My Mother's Village. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and actually it had to do with the question you raised earlier, are you more Ukrainian or more Canadian? Right. And my answer was someplace in the middle. Let's talk about your last documentary, Canadian War Story. And oh, I also did, did a documentary called Canadian War Story. Thank you for reminding me. Yes. That, that was my, my most recent film, yeah. Right, and I'm curious about the process of making a documentary because uh, making a documentary is a huge process. What resources do, did you use for the film and which one of them do you find the most valuable for you? Maybe libraries or archives or interviewing or books? Mm. A Canadian war story uh, was initiated. The idea for, for, for the film came from a, uh, a retired Ukrainian-Canadian Air Force pilot Mm -hmm. called uh, Andriy Sohonyuski and, and he came up with the idea and and he contacted me and asked me if I'd be interested in that film in making that film and and, and I said uh, sure uh, the problem with that film well maybe it, 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 uh, there is a problem with the film <laughs> every film has problems but it, uh, the problem with making the film is there was no academic material about Ukrainian Canadians in the Second World War mm -hmm. in Canada. Almost all, all, all the research in Canada, the academic research, uh, books, uh, uh, articles, whatever, uh, blogs, is about Ukrainian immigration in the late 1800s and the Holodomor. In, in, in U U U Ukraine. B between the First and Second World War, there's very little information. And as you approach the actual war, there was no information. Mm -hmm. The only information you could get was by just digging. And so we had uh, several people uh, do doing research. It was myself, Yars Balan in Edmonton and uh, and uh, Yurko Serhachuk and the late Andrei Makuch in Toronto. So four of us would go through obituaries, mm -hmm. uh, self-published books, uh, the um, the U the Ukrainian Canadian Legion newsletters. And so we just kept looking here, there, here, and there, and uh, and so we we couldn't get one long story about one person because there weren't any. Yeah. So we just had little bits, like a montage, a collage. We 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 put it together. It it it, it was hard to uh, make because we never had one really fantastic story. The, the, all, the all the stories, stories were interesting, but they were all just parts, little bits. Yeah, you you were seeing a lot of different stories. Was there just one story that impressed you the most? Oh, all, all the stories uh, 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 impressed me. All all those people, very much like in the Ukraine now, were so young, so young and they were being sent out and killed. And, you know, uh, my mothers and fathers lost, uh, there, there, there was one mother in, um, in Alberta mm -hmm. who lost three sons. All three sons went out there and, uh, and she lost the son. So uh, um, the stories like that. In, in the Air Force, the, the uh, Royal Canadian Air Force, uh, uh, one in three would die. One in three. And then, yeah, 
one, one, one in three. That, 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 that's a lot. How was your emotional feelings when you was working on these projects? Because every day you were pro processing new information and all these stories are very disappointed and very, like, very scared. How do you feel about that? Well, you know, I'm a human being, so <laughs> I, I react accordingly. Mm -hmm. And uh, just, 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 yeah, I, I just, it was, uh, war is a horrible thing, and, and it's happening now. And uh, it, it, it's, uh, it's, it's horrible. What was the most challenging for you and your team um, in terms of working on a documentary? On that specific documentary? Yeah. Uh, it, it, it was uh, uh, actually finding and veteran mm -hmm. stories. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we went r right across Canada, wherever we, we could uh, find them. For, uh, for example, um, in, 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 in the section in the Battle of Hong Kong, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the Manitoba Museum had actual re recordings of okay. uh, uh, of oh, the soldiers right. who uh, who survived the Battle of Hong Kong, so that was good. But those was the, those 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 kind of recordings were were uh, very rare because somebody in uh, in Winnipeg about uh, thirty or forty years ago got the idea: Hey, this Battle of Hong Kong was so terrible, and uh, and the boys came back here. We should we should, should we should interview them as, as a record so that was good but but that that that, that was very rare to, to have these kind of recordings yes and you have been working with uh, archival material from all kind of places yeah and yeah. how much it uh, takes you to connect uh, to take all this information to process all this information oh it it it, it, had, it it took a couple of years, uh, yeah, yeah uh, a couple of years. Though those are the um, the actual stories, the first person stories. But there's also the the part where you have to look for the um, visuals, the photography, the photographs, the the, the film clips. So that that, that, that that's another mm -hmm. uh, task. As a documentarian and a photographer. Uh, what the main idea you wanted to convey to the audience and in your opinion how well it came out? I just wanted to, to, to have a record. We want to, I should, not just me, but the people involved with him. We, uh, we want to have a record that this happened, the Canadian contribution, the Ukrainian Canadian contribution in World War II. As I mentioned in the film, of all the ethnic groups in Canada, aside from, from the British, the Ukrainian Canadians had the highest enlistment rate because the, they wanted to show that they were real Ukrainians, Meye Pravdevi Kanadechi. And th that was a strong motivation. Did they achieve their goals? Did they were recognized as a real Canadian after the war? They were, absolutely. Because what's very interesting, before the war, mm -hmm. if you had a Ukrainian name, you were second class. Mm -hmm. P people would change their name. So for example, if your name was Moroz, they would change it to, to Frost. And, and if your name was um, Paskevich, like me, I, I might change it to uh, you know Powell or Patterson or something in, in order to get a job. And, and, and before the Second World War, all these uh, kind of government jobs, like, uh, like uh, being a policeman or a fireman, you know, uh, no Ukrainians were there. Zero. Uh, unless they changed the name. But after the war, it all changed. Oh. They, uh, Ukrainians started being hired. So it became prestigious to be Ukrainians, right? Well, I don't know if it became prestigious, but they were acknowledged that, hey, hey, uh, mm -hmm. they're all right.
I think uh, since the beginning of the full-scale invasion, many Ukrainians try to learn their history and also Canadians can also learn. I can remember when I was a young guy, I, I, I would be speaking with uh, educated people and they had no idea what, what uh, a, a Ukrainian was. Mm -hmm. They would know that it's they didn't like Russia, even something know. like Russia. It's like uh, something like it's it's in Russia. And now I think after watching your film, they really can understand the contribution Ukrainians to the World War II and to building a Canadian society. Yes, uh, yeah, that, that was the, uh, the, the motive for, for making the film. I think now more than ever, it's necessary for Ukrainian history to be known in the West. Uh, what do you think needs to be done to achieve it? The problem in the West for a long time, in the West for a long time, is that the, 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 the history of France and, and Germany and Spain and Britain was taught in school and it was written about. Mm -hmm. But Eastern Europe, not, not just Ukraine, but uh, you know, Poland, B Bulgaria, uh, all those places were not written about. Russia was. P people knew, uh, you know, Chekhov and Do 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 Dostoevsky mm -hmm. and uh, Gogol, mm -hmm. you know, who was a Ukrainian. But, uh, but, but all, all those countries in the middle, be be between Russia and, and, and Austria, most people in the West and Canada know, knew and still know very little about it, except for what is happening in, in, in Ukraine because of the war. How do you see Ukrainian, commu Ukrainian Canadian community now, like when the war started since the February 24? Um, how is it changing? Well, I, I, I think that they are happy to help the, the established people in Ukraine, in Canada, the Ukrainian Canadians, people like at the Ukrainian Canadian Cultural Center, Osoredok are, are, are very happy to help, and, 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 and the Ukrainian Congress is very happy to help. They're uh, happy to help. They're, that, that, that they're excited to uh, help. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're happy to meet all the newcomers, and it's a kind of an exciting time. It, 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 it's like the, uh, let's see, first, the second, third, fourth. It, it, it's like the fifth wave of immigration now, now with the war, so. Do you think it becomes more, like, strengthened? Every wave of immigration strengthens the, 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 the community because over, over the years, uh, I, I, every community, like like this Ukrainian community, uh, uh, people uh, 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 people get assimilated uh, more. Uh, some some uh, like like myself, who you know, marry outside the marry outside the Ukraine marry outside the Ukrainian community, but 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 would still stay in touch with the Ukrainian community. Mm -hmm. But over the years, a lot of people just assimilate and any any wave of newcomers all, 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 always uh, always strengthen it's like a glass with, with a hole in the bottle mm -hmm. it comes c coming out you can't stop it because that's how assimilation works but you, you you fill it up from the top cool. and where do you want to see Ukrainian Canadian community in 10 years? I hope, uh, you know, th th that this, uh, th this infusion, th this uh, wave, th th the last two waves, will, uh, will uh, revitalize the community because we've been here since the 1890s. So there's been a lot of assimilation going on, uh, people marrying out, uh, pe people moving. Uh, across Canada, we're moving to the states, and you know we're we're, we're a society always in flux. So mm -hmm. it's not it's not like the old days where the, the Ukrainians would live here, the Jews would live here, and, and Poles would live here. Now uh, people 
people assimilate. Is it good for Ukrainians? I think it's more difficult for them to keep Ukrainian identity when they are assimilated with other cultures. Do yeah. you want us to stay Ukrainians or more assimilated? Well, uh, it, it, it's hard to say because that, uh, that, that's a rational thing, what mm -hmm. you're saying. But then there is, uh, but, but the heart is. So romance and love, if you fall in love with a uh, Scottish woman, well, I'd like I did, you know, you, 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 follow your, you, you follow your heart. Some people would, would, would say, especially the, the people of, of my, 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 my generation would, 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 would say, uh, no, my, my parents' generation would say, you have to marry a Ukrainian. Mm -hmm. Some would say that. Uh, others would, would say as long as you're happy. Be because the other side of it is that uh, Ukraine now is an independent country. Right. It has its language. You don't have to worry so much about e Ukraine. Well, you have to worry now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now because of the war. But, uh, but when, when it wasn't an independent country, when it was becoming assimilated, uh, into Russia. The Russians were p p putting down the language and uh, the, you had to learn Russian. And, uh, so the, the, the people in, in places in the West, in Canada, would be holding on to that culture for the Ukrainians over there. But now, now it's not that necessary and hope, uh, ho hopefully the Russians will, will, will be kicked out and uh, and, and Ukraine will c continue to be independent mm -hmm. with its own language and its own culture. Thank you, John. You are giving us a lot of a good information to think about. Is there anything else do you want to mention before we end? No, I, I just want to mention that it was a pleasure being here. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you for the opportunity. And thank you our audience for joining us today. We hope you enjoy it. If you like the episode, please like, share and subscribe to see our upcoming episodes.